Hey everybody, Adam Savage from Tested here with a one day build that happened over a weekend. Another weekend build that I didn't plan to shoot and I didn't plan it as a one day build, but well, it's kind of ended up like that. Um, this right here is my milling machine. It's one of my favorite tools. And here in the belly of the milling machine is the milling machine vise. And vices are something I use all over the place in the shop. Here's one for my woodworking bench underneath my drill press. I have a whole host of different vices for holding on to different things under different circumstances. So I think we've established that vices are an important maker tool. And I was watching some YouTube videos and I was watching someone make something for one of their machine tools using an old barbell. And I'd been working with cast iron for my die filer, but it hadn't occurred to me that old scrap cast iron could be used to make stuff. So I went up into the bin up in my loft full of old crap and I found this, uh, an old little piece of a lathe that I used to own. And in the course of a few hours, I, I made myself a little vice. Uh, and uh, it's hard to explain how much making this vice kind of altered me. And it's part of a bigger build, which I'll talk about in more detail when that other build goes up. But suffice to say, there are times when you use your skills to execute something that had never occurred to you before. And once you do, it opens up, it's like, it's like putting a new lens on your goggles and all of a sudden you can see things from a wider perspective. And this vice is part of that. Um, I didn't talk at all while I was making it, so enjoy here some vice making shots with some voiceover. But because it was a weekend, I decided to just film this without talking to the camera at all. So remember I said in the intro, I didn't know you could use cast iron to make stuff. I hadn't quite put it all together, but here's me cutting a chunk of cast iron that I found in the loft on my brand new portable bandsaw. It cuts beautifully on the bandsaw, by the way. So once I had the pieces cut out, I chucked them into the, I chucked them into the vise on my mill and uh, basically squared them up. I, I cut all their various edges until everything was perpendicular and parallel and square to each other. And yeah, there's me just going through the motions, taking out material, squaring it up. This L-shaped piece that's in the vise right now will eventually be the main body of my vise. It is very satisfying work to uh, to do this kind of thing, to uh, take a piece that was not square and make it square. And especially since I have also just recently trammed in my mill very tightly, which means that uh, when you do multiple passes like this, you can't feel the difference between any of the passes. Like the mill is tuned to less than a thousandth of an inch across the, the width of the vice jaws. It's a very precise machine now. I'm very proud of it. This is another chunk. Uh, I'm not sure that I end up using this chunk in the build, but since I had a bunch of chunks, I decided to square them all up before putting them into storage. I will say one thing about machining cast iron is that the dust from cast iron makes you filthy. This is, this is a complete truism. I would go home at the end of the days working on this vice and my face would be gray. Yep, I'm using the auto feed on my mill in order to uh, make nice regular cuts. There's me cutting off the end of this chunk. Look at that beautiful piece of cast iron. Useful. Yeah. There's another fin from one part of that chunk of cast iron that I started with. There we go. This is a nice big fat chunk. I, uh, I discovered the glory of carbide bits while milling cast iron. Uh, High-speed steel doesn't do quite as well. It can tend to spark, 
but carbide eats this stuff for breakfast. Again, you can see all the iron dust all over the table there. That iron dust gets absolutely everywhere and it can really mess up your machine. So you want to cover up the ways, you want to cover up the, uh, the mechanics of your machines as best you can and clean regularly. I mean, I was vacuuming up probably three times a day to get rid of all the stuff. But look at that gorgeous piece. And when I put my finger over it, it just feels like a perfectly flat piece of metal. Yeah, that'll come in handy someday. All right, this little chunk is eventually going to be the movable jaw of my vise. And here you can see the main L of my vise, and I've colored it blue with blue marking fluid to make some uh, measurements. Here's me machining a little fork at the bottom of the movable vise jaw. And uh, that will actually... There we go. Okay, so this is inspired by Chris at ClickSpring, who does a final sand on every part that he makes. So I've got some, I think this is 320 grit sandpaper. This might be 400. And I put some light oil on it. And I'm gonna do Chris's very specific technique of sanding in little infinity symbols, little Ouroboros, little figure eights. And you can see my tongue sticking out, always. Some of my COVID lockdown hair sticking out on uh on my left there on the workbench you can actually see the vice that i'm replacing and uh, as i'm wearing out one part of the sandpaper i'm moving on to the next but i'm getting a really nice little part this is super super relaxing work there we go there's the l with the slot cut out of the bottom to fit the carrier for the live jaw and I'm really pleased with how that looks. That's the live jaw. Yeah. Okay, so this is a chunk of bronze that uh, I salvaged out of a boat that Jamie and I blew up. It will come in later. This right here is the, uh, the thread for the driver for the live jaw of the vise. Every vise uses, well, actually, not every vise, but most vises use a threaded rod of some kind, acne threads. Uh, but this is just a normal, I think, uh, 3 8 inch stainless steel bolt that I'm turning down the end of so that I can capture that end in the live jaw of the vise. Turning it down on my lathe. And I've placed the lathe in exactly a position that you can't see what's happening. Oh, there we go little tiny cutoff wheel. Okay, so here's me uh, drilling out the mounting holes for the thread carrier for the vise, and now I'm adding some cooling fluid so I can tap those two holes. And that is a little tapping block I made on Tested a few weeks ago. Made of acrylic, it just makes sure that I'm tapping perfectly, uh, uh, perpendicularly to the hole. I love tapping. I find it so relaxing. I don't know. I feel like you can tell how quiet the shop is right now, like that, that it's not a weekday. There we go. Adding a little more for the second hole. You can never have too much cutting fluid. I like how every now and then you can see my unkempt hair enter the top of the frame. So now I've got this little brass keeper that holds the threaded rod for driving the live jaw of the vise. I want to round the top. So I've got a circle template here and I've split the center. And now this is, this is the most click spring shot in this whole video. This is like, here I am working up to the line and it gets even better. Now I'm going to, Sand it a bit. Yep, this is again the same technique. Sanding in little figure eights. And you get some beautiful results with this. It's just really quite lovely. Uh, I wasn't perfectly happy with how the sanding was going on the sides. So here's me working it with a file. And I think you can even see me working non-level. Yeah, this piece kind of kicked my butt for, for a little while. Uh, but I managed to wrestle it into submission. And this is my die filer in action, doing the final fit and finish on this piece. Ah, oh, look at, I mean, it doesn't move a lot of material, but for small parts when you're looking at it like this, it moves a lot of material. 
it is an incredible tool. One small thing is that triangular, that triangular file doesn't, it's not as vertical as I want it to be. It's out about a thou and I've got to fix that. There's my part. It's a beautiful part. Okay, so here is, I am now uh, cutting a piece of brass. Oh, right, this is gonna end up being, um, this will sit on the underside of the live jaw and help keep it. So I'm just like squaring it off so I can saw off a little bitty chunk. And again, this is my upright bandsaw. This thing was the most useful tool for this build. I literally couldn't have done this build without this thing. That little piece, that's the one I want. Well, now I'm going to uh, chamfer the edges of my little piece. I'm going to flatten it out. Yeah, just make it a little bit nicer. It's really, I mean, you're, you're pulling off like tenths of thousandths of an inch, right? Like really, really small amounts. It allows you to... This die filer really allows you to dial in a precision that I best wasn't quite aware of. <laughs> okay, so there's the main body of the vise. And that's the jaw. That's the keeper that holds the thread. There's the little keeper that sits underneath the live jaw. Those are some of the nuts and bolts. You see the threaded rod behind me and some washers. And I'm going to do a little... Uh... This is totally inspired by so many YouTube videos I watch. A little... Hands assembling a complex little object in front of you. Then you can see that little tongue sticks out from the live jaw and the brass keeper sits on top of it. Yeah. Those little handheld Weeha screwdrivers are just the best. I think that one turns out to be a little too tight. Yep, I had to do a little mod. I actually ended up, by the end of the entire build, I ended up rebuilding that vice jaw twice. The the live part, the part that I'm screwing the uh, screw right into, yeah. I had to build it twice and I ended up rebuilding the, uh, the threaded rod as well because it wasn't as long as I needed it to be. Here go the little 440 screws that hold the brass thread keeper on there. There's still a ways to go with this. But at this point, I was so excited looking at something that was, like, functional that had just been in my sketchbook hours before. I, I, I know that sounds funny for me to say because I build so many things, but the idea of building an actual tool that I would actually use is, um, it's rare. So there's the back of my threaded rod. I think I'm making the second one now. Yeah, I've managed to place the camera just the perfectly wrong place. Got to check the check the diameter. Adjusting. Okay. What are we doing here? Oh, this is going to end up being the handle for turning the vise. So this is a piece of steel, not uh, cast iron. This is a piece of steel that I squared off, and uh, this hole that I'm drilling now will receive the threaded rod. And I might be using too much cooling fluid here, because I could probably go a little farther, but I really want this hole to be perfect. This is a tiny little part, so I'm going very carefully. I'm just like pulling out maybe 30, 40, 50 thou at a time. So now, got all the parts. This is a little turned down set screw that goes in, and the nubbin at the end of it holds on to the end of the stainless steel threaded rod. <laughs> You'll see me stick the stainless steel threaded rod in there, and then I turn the set screw a couple of turns until it grabs, and you can see it spins but doesn't let go. Now, I've got to put the threaded rod into the bronze keeper so I can put it all together. This is, again, each time I put this together, I learn something different about the order of operations that is ideal, but... Here we go. So now I'm going to put in... It later turned out that that bronze keeper was better in one position than another. So I put three little uh, witness marks on its underside so I knew which way to install it. Now I'm going to put the brass keeper on the underside. I think I also rebuilt that part twice. With these high precision parts that have to meet 
at very tightly controlled uh, uh, measurements, you're off by a thou and the whole thing will bind. It's, it's really intense. But it's also super pleasurable to get close and then dial in that last couple of thousandths so something is super smooth. So this is a set screw that goes in the end of the handle. The handle is still unfinished. It's still just a square of steel right now. But I'm testing operation. So I've milled a flat on the end of the threaded rod that the set screw grabs. And uh, this... Uh, 632 long screw long machine bolt will eventually hold on to the handle the little spinny handle yeah there you go that's a vice look at that it's not quite as easy to turn as i eventually got it but yeah man oh, so exciting tightening those down a little bit yeah There it is. I took some pictures of it on my sketchbook. I did pages and pages of sketches of this thing before building it. The ruler that you can see there will eventually be a stop uh, for where this vise will sit and allow you to constantly make pieces of the same length. But I also tried some bluing. Now you see the finished turn crank handle and the crank knob. And I've got them sitting on a bed of brass chips in a crucible spoon and I'm slowly warming them up. This is something that I have watched a couple of videos on on Clickspring. I find it so fascinating. It turns out that brass chips are like the perfect way to warm up steel so you're not hitting it directly with the fire and getting scaling and, and, and oxidization. Um, and this takes a while. We're not gonna wait. We're not gonna make you wait the whole while, but it takes a while. You can see the brass chips getting darker, and you can see the steel kind of smoking here. And it's hard to notice at first. And then all of a sudden, you look at it. There it is. It's getting yellow, and now it's like turning the same color as the brass. This is so cool to witness in front of you. And you can see the brass chips really getting discolored around the edges there. Now the crank hand. Yeah, look, it's getting darker. We're getting almost like a, a purple. The blue is getting deeper. And Chris on Clickspring's totally right. This is a magnificent method for bluing, man. It really, really evens it out. It's just lovely. It's also made it really clear how high of a polish you need to get something to in order for it to still be polished once you've blued it. Uh, like, I actually thought that the crank handle was a little more polished than it looks now. The crank knob is totally perfect. Well, there you go, guys. That was my vice making video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And I can't wait until you see the build that it goes into. You don't even know it's right here and I'm not even going to shoot it. Yeah. Oh, it's like it's like right below frame. Oh, my God. Is that a piece of it? That's a piece of it. Yeah, I'm teasing the build that's coming up in a few more days. Um, this vice, that vice and this build it sort of gave me a whole new way of seeing the making of things. It's not too, that's not too overarching of a statement to make. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. Keep making, stay safe, and I will see you next time.